Hi, this is Brandon Yelts from the implementation team. Today we're going to be discussing our counter sales module. So what our counter sales module is used for is not necessarily a full point of sale system, but most of our clients will actually use it uh, to uh, as a quick order entry system for their walk-in customers um, or for off-site sales. For counter sales, we do have a few different screens around the setup of counter sales itself. First, I'm going to go to our security editor. So if I go to our admin menu and security editor, within here, I'm going to just type in counter sales in my bar there. And so you'll notice we have two different sections um, of security for our counter sales module. So the first security is just counter sales. And this is where you can change the ability for users to be able to take credit card payments, cash payments, if they have the ability to change the pricing, if they can delete documents. There's some setup around default checkbooks um, or default documents as well within here. And we do have a few different scripts on here. So within the script section, um, this is where some of our clients like to use a cash drawer with the counter sales module. And so there's a section in here where you can put in a script that will actually pop the cash drawer. So that's what the script section would be used for. Outside of that, there is also a counter sales document properties. And so this is where you can set security of changing the sales rep, payment terms, price level, different pieces of security like that. There is one other piece of security that we want to make sure our group has access to, and it's going to be called store setup. And so store setup, we'll just want to make sure there's a checkbox next to that. Outside of that, that is everything around security editor for uh, our counter sales module. So now we're ready to open our counter sales module. And if I want to do that, I can go up to the application tab and there's a module on here that just says counter sales. So counter sales, when I open it up, you can see that it opens in this tab for customer search. So what this would allow you to do is actually search a customer that you're going to be creating your counter sale for. So in the customer search field, you can type in, you know, the customer name or the customer number. And you can see that it'll autofill your actual customer information here once you start typing. So when I choose alt manufacturing, you're going to notice that it populates some different information in here. In order to be able to start your order for all manufacturing, you have to choose what address code that you want to use. So in my scenario, I can just click on primary and it'll start an order for the primary address. Now, if I go back to customer search real quick here, and I'm going to click search on that again, you'll notice you have the ability to under, you can see begin and end date within here. And so this allows you to actually search any open documents that that customer currently has and it categorizes each of their documents by batch here too. So this is a sales document search essentially that'll let you, if you double click on the document itself, it'll allow you to open that document within counter sales. For all manufacturing though, I'm ready to create a document for them. So I'm gonna go back. Now at the top, you'll notice that you can see I have standard invoice chosen. And so this allows you to actually choose what type of document ID that you want to create in your counter sales. Most of our clients, they will start in counter sales uh, just as an invoice because most of their customers, if they're walking into the store, they're taking something off of the shelf or they're buying it at that point in time. And so there's no reason for it to start with an order. So you might see on mine, I'm starting with a standard invoice. Once I'm ready to actually create my document, like I said earlier, I can just choose my address code and that's gonna pull up this counter sales entry screen here. From here, you're gonna notice it's very similar to our sales document entry where you can key in item numbers or there's the ellipsis here where you can actually search for specific items and add them to your order. Through our counter sales module as well, some of our customers will use a USB symbol scanner that, which will allow them to scan the actual barcode of the item that the customer's bringing up and actually populate the item number field right here. So that's another option. In my scenario, I'm just going to start typing in some items. And tabbing off, as you can see, we'll start a next line. 
if there's any pricing around that item, it will pull into the unit price field. You can see in the summary section over here on the right, you can change additional information like put in a customer PO number, sales rep, payment terms. But when you keep continue to add your items here, you'll see that it starts to build your total or your subtotal down below here based on the items that you're adding. So it's a little different from our, our typical sales document entry screen because that sales document entry, you have to actually save the document in order to get that total or the subtotal. Now keep in mind, tax will not calculate until you go to the checkout portion if there is um, any tax on that order. Also too, if I right click in here and go to customize layout, you'll see this customization menu just like the sales document entry screen where you can add, remove additional columns if needed. Once I've added my items to my order and I'm ready to check out, I can press F12 on my keyboard or click the checkout button here. Now I'll have to change my screen here a little bit so we can see it better. Now you can see from the checkout screen here that this actually integrates with Notice Pay Fabric. You can do manual credit card payments from here. Um, we have the cash check option as well. So you can take cash check payments here too. So on my document, this customer owes me $41.30. Let's say they give me $45. When I tab off of that 45 amount, you'll see that my change for this document tells me $3.70. So if they gave me $45, this lets me know that the customer, I owe them $3.70. So that's one nice thing about counter sales as well. And so it'll actually only apply the amount within here of what the customer owes. So even if you are typing in a 45 in this amount field, it'll tell you the change to give the customer and only apply what they owe. Once you're done with this document and the customer is left, you can click the submit button in the upper right corner and this will actually move the document through workflow. So if you have a workflow around your standard invoice, you can click the submit and it'll move it to the next batch within your workflow. What I've done for customers in the past is they wanted a cash receipt or a copy of the invoice to print out to give to the customer. So when they click the submit button, through workflow you can set up our smart printing plugin and the customer can receive a copy of their invoice via email or you can print it off. Now there is some additional setup around our counter sales module that I want to get into. So first I want to talk about store setup. So if I go to the setup slash utilities tab, there is a store setup option here. So when I open store setup, you'll notice that there are a few different sections to the store setup screen. You have your left section, which is the store and drawer setup. And so that's where you can set up multiple stores and the drawers that belong to those stores, along with a walk-in customer. And with that store setup within here, you have your assigned user section where you can assign specific users to those stores. And from here, you can also assign that user to a drawer as well. And then you also have the unassigned user section as well. So these are all my current users in my sales pad database where they're not currently assigned to a store and drawer. So if I want to set up a new store or a drawer in my database, it's just as easy as clicking the new button here. And now it's going to default based on my first store that I have on here or what I was highlighted on. So store one. So if I want to set up additional drawer here, I can just type in drawer four. Or if I want to set up a new store, I can just click the new button and just change my store name in here. So store three. <clears throat> now with each of these as well, like I mentioned, you can set up a walk-in customer. So what that means is you're not having to choose your customer every single time that you're doing an order through our counter sales module. The system will automatically choose that customer for you. So if I click in the walk-in customer section here, you can actually click this ellipsis and this will pull up the customer lookup. So I know in my system, I do have a walk-in customer set up. 
So I'm just going to click on that customer number. So now anytime that someone in store one, drawer one is doing a invoice through counter sales, when they start a new one, it'll actually default to this walk-in customer here. And also, like I mentioned, if I want to assign like a new user to this, this particular store and drawer, I can just click on the actual unassigned user itself and then click on the assign button. And now this test user is assigned to this store and drawer. If I want to assign a different one to this one, same thing. Click on that, the assign, and now Brandon Y is assigned to store one, drawer two. Now there's also a walk-in customer button here as well, where it pretty much works the exact same as what you see right here. <clears throat> Lastly, there is a credit card device button on here. So if I click on this button, this is where you would actually go to set up credit card swipers and chip and pin readers as well. Now that I've set up my walk-in customer in here, I have my store drawer set up as well. Um, you will notice that I do need to log out, log back in for my changes to take place. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna log out. Let's log back in. So now when I open up counter sales and I'm ready to do a new invoice, I can click on the counter sales module. And you'll notice it automatically skips that customer search tab here. And you can see now in the summary section, it defaults to my walk-in customer. So now you're not having to choose your customer every time that you're doing a new counter sale. Now we have recently added a new customer tab on here as well. So if you wanted to create a brand new customer through our counter sales module, it can be done through this new customer tab. Also, you'll notice from store setup, I assign my brand and user to a store and drawer. So if I want to see what store and drawer I'm currently operating in, if I go to the upper right corner, you'll see these gears on uh, my little taskbar here. And if I click those gears, it shows me what store I'm on and what drawer that I'm on right here. So let's say, for example, store one is my default store that I operate in. But for today, my store two has is short a couple people because someone's out sick. What I can do is if I go up to store one here and click that drop down, you can actually choose what store that you're currently operating in. And when I click store two, you can see that I changed my store to store two. Now I got this error message because I didn't set up my walk-in customer for store two. And so this is gonna actually force me to put in a different customer since I didn't set up that walk-in customer. So mainly what you'd wanna do is under the store setup, make sure that you have your walk-in customer set up for each store. So I'm gonna go back and let's go to store one here. Now you'll notice to the right of the save button, there is an actions button. So all of our sales document plugins are still available from the counter sales module as well. Another button I wanted to show on here is if I'm typing in an XLG and I type in an A100 as well. And for some reason, you know, I don't want to use counter sales. I want to actually go to my, my standard sales documentary screen because I have different information available to me. What I can do from here is actually click on the detailed view button. And when I do that, that's going to open up our normal sales document entry screen. And as you can see on mine, you know, I'm going to have some additional information that I can see from here. So that's what the detailed view button is used for. So that's it for our counter sales video. We do have documentation on our website for our counter sales module as well. Thanks for watching.